morning. Welcome to worship this morning and thank you for being here. You are obviously very dedicated people. <laughs> thank you. Uh, a couple of announcements. First of all, for those of you who do not have email or have not read your email, Judy Flading's husband passed away early Friday morning. Uh, the services, the obituary will not be in the paper until Wednesday. Um, so services are Friday at Reed Funeral Home, North Canton. Uh, calling hours 10.30 to noon. The service is at noon. Uh, interment is at North Lawn and there will be uh, a lunch, dinner, meal here in Fellowship Hall afterwards. So uh, just to let you know those arrangements. Also, you will see on your calendar, it says dominoes. For those of you who play dominoes, don't come. I stuck it in there because I thought we were still doing dominoes and Pat Hoffman said, hey, we don't have dominoes in the winter like this. I said, oh, sorry. So my bad, don't come. Also, we have been notified by the building department that those logs that are down there that are actually the neighbor's logs that they did not take when they had the tree cut down, those are our problem to clean up. Um, yeah, not really happy about that. Um, so uh, if we can notify the neighbor, we will. We have not been able to do so as yet. Chuck Bressler has tried several times. Uh, we noticed there were lights on at night, but we weren't about to stop at the door at, in the dead of night. So um, in case we cannot notify them, if any of you know anybody who is selling firewood or would like to uh, have wood to heat their ho homes, please let them know that they can have it. If they want to haul it out of here, it's theirs. So if you know of anybody, please let me know. Um, also, I have made one change because we are all getting older and sometimes it is hard to stand for a lengthy period of time. If you notice, um, at the homily, I have added, please be seated through the offering. So we will be seated through uh, the hymn of the day all the way to the offering. Um, we'll see how it goes. If you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, we can change it back. But we're all getting older. We all have bad days. And obviously, you're all welcome to sit at any time during the service. But we're just going to we're gonna try this and see if it works. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, let me know that too. Any other announcements? Seeing none, let us begin worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have not wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First Samuel chapters 3, 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyes had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling us before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 12 through 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said that two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord be becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that the person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. 
When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Because the parish cut his salary, the devout pastor took a job delivering pizzas to make ends meet. On his first day on the job, he was walking past a big construction site when he heard the workers using the foulest language he'd ever heard. He stopped and asked the man closest to him, do you know Jesus Christ? The worker bellowed to his colleagues, hey, does anybody know Jesus Christ? After a pause, he added, his pizza's here. In today's odd little gospel lesson, Nathaniel does not know Jesus, but Jesus certainly knows him. This gospel truly is a quirky little gospel lesson. Jesus has just started his ministry and is beginning to call his disciples. He has already called Andrew and Andrew's brother, Simon Peter. Then Jesus calls Philip with a simple, follow me. Philip jumps in line with a rest. Okay, so, do any of you see any issues with this? Follow me. Okay. Um, not sure I'd be that quick to jump on the bus, but, well, let's continue. So now Philip goes into super evangelism mode and heads over to his friend Nathaniel. Now Philip tells Nathaniel in the most ghastly sentence possible, that he basically has found the savior foretold so long ago and that he is the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Well, Nathaniel has some pretty strong thoughts on that to the point where he asks Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now I haven't found a commentator yet who can figure out what the problem is with Nazareth. But whatever it is, Nathaniel knows it, and it is certainly coloring his opinions with sarcasm. But Philip persists and says, come and see. So Jesus notice, notices that Philip has at least gotten Nathaniel to show up. And Jesus says, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. In other words, Nathaniel is someone who can't hide his feelings, so he just blurts out what he's thinking and speaks his mind. Well, that statement shocks Nathaniel, who then replies, where did you get to know me? Considering he's never met Jesus, how does Jesus know Nathaniel tells it like it is? Jesus' response, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Now, one thing to note is that seeing in the Bible is more than just physically seeing someone. It's more of an understanding someone, acknowledging their presence, valuing them enough to pay attention. Well, this really strikes Nathaniel, who then exclaims, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Talk about Nathaniel changing his mind at a moment's notice. Now it's Jesus' turn to respond, sort of tongue-in-cheek. Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And that's basically where chapter 1 stops, and chapter 2 immediately begins with the wedding at Cana. So apparently it is at this point that Nathaniel becomes a disciple. The only other place he is mentioned is in chapter 21 of John, when Jesus appears to the disciples after the resurrection. Therefore, very little is known about Nathanael. Come and see. If you were invited to come and see, would you go? 
Or have we become jaded like Nathaniel? Why come and see? I've come and seen, but nothing ever happens. Have our preconceived notions of how church is supposed to be limited our actions of doing something different that actually might cause others to want to come and see? Have we spent too much time doing the same old, same old that no one's interested in anymore? I have read about pastors who are now meeting at bars and having services. Those services started out really small and impromptu, but now have grown significantly in number. Having church in a bar is something many would reject, but our God does not neatly fit in a box. Our God is one of surprises. Our God shows up in a stable. He shows up in the back country, the hospital, the dementia unit. He shows up in places that we would never seek God. But he is always there, hoping that we will come and see. One commentator put it best. Pastor David Luz states, when it comes to Jesus, it doesn't stop with come and see, but always moves to the deeper invitation to come and be. Be what God has called you. Be the person the world needs. Be all you can be. Be the beloved child of God who invites others to a similarly transformative experience of relationship with Christ. It is true that God doesn't want us to just come and see. God does want us to come and be. He wants us to be his disciples, help do the work that he has prepared for us to do, and sometimes in the most unexpected places. For it is through our actions that we reflect God, and it is through our actions and excitement for our faith that we bring others to God. Our actions and excitement make others want to come and see. Sometimes being the person God wants us to be and doing the things we are called to do generate a lot of excitement. Several months ago, I asked Lester if he would be willing to change his position on counsel to evangelism, since that was really what he was doing already. The Main Street Festival, the Valentines for Akron Children's, the spreading love cards and bookmarks around the church, all of those were evangelism. Thankfully, he said yes. We are now planning a Christmas bazaar. He does not want me to use that word, but for lack of a better title yet, we haven't come up with one. Uh, the Christmas Bazaar wraps up new or gently used items for Christmas and sells them at very low prices so that those who really can't afford a lot for Christmas can still come and purchase Christmas gifts. There will be crafts, baked goods, food, and of course, gifts. This is going to be quite an undertaking, but it is already set for December 7th. And it is an event that is calling all of us to come and be to be the light to the community, be the light to so many others. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross once said, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is only revealed if there is light from within. Be the light, be enthusiastic, be God's excitement so that so many others will want to come and see. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on this church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church. God of truth, let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disasters. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and uplift those on the margins of society. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle. God of compassion, you who know our inner hearts be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite and restoration. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world. God of unity, make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth. We remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and silent prayers in our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray in confidence as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please greet those around you.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we may receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. be seated. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. The body of Christ given for you. Let us eat together. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us drink together.
God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, you are God's beloved.